So in this video, we want to take a look at loops. We have a few different ways to, to do loops. We're going to spend a lot of time with the for loop. And when we're using loops, we can use them as a way to execute a sequence of statements or some code uh, multiple times. Uh, and we can figure out how many times exactly we want to run it uh, and those kinds of things. But it's, it's good for this really repeating, repetitive uh, type of tasks. So here I want to just uh, show you what we're trying to do and then I'll show you the code. So I want the, the selection to be here, to be A1. And then I want it to just loop through each of these rows below it. And later we'll look at adding if thens and conditions and stuff like that to make decisions. Right now I just want to move. I just want the cursor or the uh, selection to move. So I can do this with a for loop. And this is the heart of it. This is uh, the for loop is declared with a four. Then we have a counter. And the counter can be anything you want. Typically uh, I, J, K, uh, those are frequently used as counters. So we're going to start out with an I counter. And we just uh, name it, declare it up here as a variable. And then this is the first and the last steps. So the way this loop is going to read, it will start in A1, and then the first time through will be loop one. And then in loop one, it will do this. It will offset by, and notice this counter, this is row column, so it will offset by one row. Because the first time through, I is populated with one. But no column change, and it will select it, then the next thing it will do is go to the next loop, which will be the two loop. And it will offset by two rows, no columns. And then it will go to the next one, which is three, and it will offset by three rows, th no columns. It looks like this when it runs. It happens very quickly. There's another handy little thing that we can do uh, called wait. And wait's just a way to add a little pause in there. And it's read as get the date and time now and add one second to it. So basically when we should watch this be able to move now. So the first thing we're gonna do is call go to A1, and then from A1 in the first loop, we're gonna offset by one row, no column, wait a second, go to the second loop, offset by two rows, no columns. Okay? So now let's watch it. and we can see it moving. So it's accurately looping down through our data. Um, these numbers would have to change based on our starting and our ending uh, rows, and later we'll use variables to populate those. If I want to do something more interesting than just select, I can go down through here and uh, now into the value of that cell, uh, I'm going to generate a random number between 1 and 100. Uh, and I'm going to do that, I'm going to have three columns of data, uh, sorry, three rows of data. So now these 23 should change to something else. And it's happening that quickly. If I want to watch it happen, I can slow it down. Now, be careful with using this weight. If you have uh, several hundred rows and several columns, uh, it could take a long time to loop through all those. But in our small little data sets that we're using here, we're going to use application weight as a way to make sure that the, um, the selection is actually occurring where we want it to, that the data, uh, we're just slowing down time a little bit. So that's looping through a column, or looping down a column through all the different rows, but we also may have multiple columns to loop through. We want to start here and loop through our data. Then we want to come over here and loop through our data. And then we want to come up here and loop through our data. So we're still using that offset to be able to move. But we're going to offset one row, no column, two rows, no columns, three rows, no columns. And then we're going to offset one row, one column, one row, two columns, two rows, two columns three rows, two columns. So we're going to change this uh, zero. We need to change that to a J as a second counter and create another set of loops. So 
So J is actually going to be our column counter. We'll nest these loops. And notice the counting here is a little different because on the first round through, I want it to be no column offset. So one row, no column. Then the second round through, I want it to be uh, one row, one column. And the second round through, I want it to be one row, two column offset. So the counting for the column is a little bit different than the counting for the row. So let's try this now. First, it'll start off with the zero loop. And in the zero loop, then it will do the one loop for i, the two loop for i, the three loop for i. But when it gets to four, there's no four. So it will escape out of this, this loop and we'll go to the next j, which will be one. And then inside of one, it'll do this. When it gets to four, it'll escape out, next j, and it'll go to two. So we should see it move down like that. And it looks like our data is doing what we expected. So let's write some random numbers in there. Whoops, we're missing our J. Let's try it again. If we want to watch it work, now as we get better with this and better with loops, we'll be able to uh, read that value of that cell that we're in right now and put it into a variable, make some decisions and do different things like that. Right now, we're just simply trying to um, move the selection uh, around and, and just get the idea of how the loops work as we're moving through.